welcome from our home to yours. We hope you enjoy St. John's Sunday morning church service. Please join us for the opening acclamation. O God, let our mouths proclaim your praise. And your glory all day long. Christ has triumphed over death. O come, let us worship. Glory to God, source of all being, eternal word, and Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. This is the Venite. Come, sing to the Holy One. Shout for joy to the rock who defends us. Come into the presence with thanksgiving. Raise our voices in joyful hymns. Truly the Holy One is a great God, supreme above all gods, in whose hands are the ends of the earth and the heights of all the mountains. The sea belongs to God who made it, whose hands formed the dry land. Come, worship, and bow down. Kneel in the presence of our Creator. Truly, truly, our God is the Holy One, whose people we are all in God's pasture. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If the Lord had not been on our side, let Israel now say, if the Lord had not been on our side when enemies rose up against us, then would they have swallowed us up alive in their fierce anger toward us? Our help is in the name of the Lord. Then would the waters have overwhelmed us and the torrent gone over us. Then would the raging waters have gone right over us. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. He has not given us over to be a prey for their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Our help is in the name of the Lord. A reading from the book of Exodus. Now a new king arose over Egypt who did not know Joseph. He said to his people, Look, the Israelite people are more numerous and powerful than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, or they will increase, and in the event of war, join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. Therefore they set taskmasters over them to oppress them with forced labor. They built supply cities, Pithom and Ramesses for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread, so that the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. The Egyptians became ruthless in imposing tasks on the Israelites and made their lives bitter with hard service in mortar and brick and every kind of field labor. They were ruthless in all the tasks that they imposed on them. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of them who was named Shipra and the other Pua, When you act as midwives to the Hebrew women and see them on the birthing stool, if it is a boy, kill him. But if it is a girl, she shall live. But the midwives feared God. They did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but let the boys live. So the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and said to them, Why have you done this and allowed the boys to live? The midwife said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not like Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife comes to them. So God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and became very strong. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, Every boy that is born to the Hebrews you shall throw into the Nile, but you shall let every girl live. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was fine baby, she hid him three months. When she could not hide him any longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bituum and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe in the river while her attendants walked beside. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying, and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrew children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, 
Shall I go and get a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and she took him as her son. She named him Moses, because, she said, I drew him out of the water. The word of the Lord. Here is the Gospel Responsory. Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. You have died, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. Awake, O sleeper, and rise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. When Christ, our life, appears, you will awake with him in glory. Awake, Awake, O sleeper, sleeper, and and rise from from the the dead, dead, and and Christ Christ shall give you light. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The Gospel of Christ. The Lord be with you. I'm Todd Townsend, Bishop of Huron. After two weeks of focus on these Genesis stories through the lens of women, the matriarchs of the stories, these last two videos in the series will focus on the remaining patriarchs. If you look at how Genesis is organized, you can basically divide the book into four parts. The whole thing's about God, of course. God is the central character in every part of the story and in ours. God is relating to creation and to people, families of people, who are trying to respond to God's summons, God's invitation, God's call to live in a living relationship with God. The first of the four is Adam. This is in the prehistory. He's the first human, the first place, Eden, the first creation. The second part of the story is Abraham, along with Sarah, who embraces the call. Third part revolves around Jacob, which we'll hear today. This is Rebecca and Isaac's son, and Abraham and Sarah's grandson. We'll see how Jacob reveals that it is a very conflicted call of God. And then the book concludes with Joseph, the young son of Jacob, who lives out the hidden call of God. The invitation to be in relationship with God is embraced, then it's conflicted, and it's always somewhat hidden until revealed. Jacob. As we've seen, there were plenty of conflict between the humans before Jacob came along, but here it gains some focus and takes it up a level in this remarkable and infuriating character. The thing that we notice about our heroic ancestors in the faith is that there's no hiding their faults, their failures, their earthiness. Jacob, again, stands out in this regard because his behavior is scandalous in so many ways. The grandson of the promise is this crude mixture of motives. He's a rascal compared to the faithful grandfather Abraham or his successful father's Isaac. And here we see how the purposes of God are tangled up in self-interested behavior even. Yet God has chosen Jacob to be a special part of the plan. This child who could be considered low and despised will be overturned through conflict and trouble. And God's purposes will get worked out in and through the trouble. This is a a blessing and a burden of life with God. 
So the Jacob story is told in chapters 25 to 36, and there's a lot to it. He then continues to be a central part of the Joseph story, chapters 37 to 50, which covers the whole second half of Genesis. I won't be able to summarize it all here, um, it's, but it's pretty good reading though, so I suggest you read it again or for the first time. Here are the contours of the story, things to watch while you're reading. God has made a promise to form a people, a family, to be God's people. And God has promised to be their God. God has promised protection, reward, heirs, a great nation, a people who will be blessed so that they may become a blessing to others. God promises that faithfulness is the goal and summit of the relationship in this everlasting covenant. But as the story progresses, it's far from clear if or how God's going to be able to keep the promise. And will the humans trust in this promise and blessing enough? We've seen all along how the promise comes up against one kind of barrenness or resistance or another, one kind of conflict or another. Nothing's particularly easy. And for Jacob, right from the womb, he's jostling and agitating as he grows. It's, it's clear that he cares primarily about his own prosperity, his own well-being and fertility. He steals the blessing from his father and his brother. He manipulates the situation in one scene after another to meet his own needs and interests. First, it was with Esau, his brother. When Jacob, when Jacob steals his brother's birthright, Esau vows to kill him, so Jacob runs. And this broken relationship hangs over Jacob's head for much of his life. Jacob runs away. He leaves Beersheba in the south and goes toward Haran, far in the north. And he stopped one night, laid a stone under his head for a pillow, and had that wonderful but strange dream of the ramp or the stairway, the ladder to heaven, with the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside Jacob and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and your offspring. And the promise is both renewed and given explicitly to Jacob. And Jacob wakes up shouting, How awesome is this place! God is in this place and I didn't even know it. This is the house of God, Bethel. This is the gate of heaven. Pretty powerful dream. He set a stone pillar up on the mark, uh, to mark the spot, and he said, This will be my God. And from there, Jacob continued far north and east around the great desert, and he met some people at a water well, one of whom was Rachel. The whole point of this journey was to run away from Esau's threat and to start a new life with his uncle Laban. Jacob was looking for Laban, but he found first Rachel and fell in love immediately and he kisses Rachel. It must have been a heck of a kiss because it caused him to weep aloud. And Jacob settled there, working for Laban, in love with Jacob. For seven years he worked so that he could marry Laban's daughter. And the trickster got tricked, because when the time came, Laban offered his older daughter, Leah, instead. But Jacob loved Rachel, so he worked another seven years to earn Rachel's hand, and everything in the story is a bit of a chess match. Jacob ends up with four wives in total, Rachel being the favorite, and twelve sons. These sons became the namesake of the twelve tribes of Israel. You may have heard of them. Leah gave birth to four sons, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah. Rachel, who remained barren, got her servant involved, Bilhah, and there were more sons. Uh, Bilhah gave birth to Dan and Naphtali. Leah joined in again, giving her servant Zilpah a shot at it in marriage so that Leah could raise more children through her, and Zilpah gave birth to Gad and Asher. Afterwards, Leah became fertile again and gave birth to Yishekar, Zebulun, and Dinah, Jacob's first and only daughter. And then finally, God remembered Rachel, who gave birth to Joseph and Benjamin. Okay, you got that? These 12 sons and daughter, and daughters maybe, are part of the, the promise of God. The promise was kept. These sons will return next week in the story of conflict that's coming up in Joseph's story. So after Joseph was born, Jacob decided he could 
go back to his parents and his brother seeking maybe reconciliation. And with Rachel's help, Jacob had to trick Laban in order to be released. Of course, there was a trick, but it worked. And off he went with Laban chasing after him, wanting to kill him. And as Jacob neared his homeland, he sent messengers ahead to his brother Esau, who he had wronged so long ago. And they returned with news that Esau was coming to meet Jacob with an army of 400 men. So Jacob prepared for the worst. He prayed to God and he sent on a, ahead of him a tribute of flocks and herds to Esau. A present to my master Esau from your servant Jacob. Jacob moved his large family and flocks across the river and he returned to be alone overnight before this confrontation. And there a mysterious being appeared in the night and the two wrestled until daybreak. And when the being saw that he did not overpower Jacob, he touched Jacob on the hip and gave him a limp. And Jacob demanded a blessing of this person and wanted to know his name, but didn't get it. But he instead was named Israel, the one who struggled with the divine one, the one who prevailed, the one who has seen God. Jacob asked this being's name again, but refused to answer. And he ended up calling the place Penuel, meaning face of God. I have seen the face of God and lived. And it says, finally in the morning, Jacob looked up and saw Esau coming with his 400 men. He divided the children between Leah and Rachel and the two maidservants. And he put the maidservants out in front, Leah and the children next, Rachel and Joseph last. And then Jacob led the way as he approached his brother. He bowed down seven times, honoring his brother. But Esau ran up and embraced him, held him tight and kissed him. And they both wept. Then Esau looked around and saw the women and children. And who are these with you? Jacob said, the children that God saw fit to bless me with. Then the servants came up with their children and bowed, and Leah and her children also bowed. And finally, Joseph and Rachel came up and bowed to Esau. Esau then asked, And what was the meaning of all the, those herds and gifts that I met? Well, I was hoping that they would pave the way for my master to welcome me, says Jacob. And Esau said, Oh, brother, I have plenty of everything. Keep what is yours for yourself. Jacob says, please, if you can find it in your heart to welcome me, accept these gifts. When I saw your face, it was as the face of God smiling on me. Accept these gifts I have brought for you. God has been good to me and I have more than enough. And Esau accepted. And then Esau said, let's start out on our way. I'll take the lead. It's beautiful. In all this, we see the capacity of God to transform people, to transform power relations, and to bring a well-being that's far better than the one that we can provide for ourselves. Next week, we'll move on to that young son, Joseph. In the meantime, be at peace, stay safe, pray for one another, as I'm praying for you. The Apostle Creed I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He had descended into death, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, and the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The Prayers of the Community God of Israel, may this day be one of fulfillment and peace. Holy One, hear and have mercy. Teach us to love others as you have loved us. Holy One, hear and have mercy. Fill the world with your peace and justice. Holy One, hear and have mercy. 
Strengthen and relieve those who are in need. Holy One, hear and have mercy. Renew the church through the power of your life-giving spirit. Holy One, hear and have mercy. The Colix. Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Collect of the Day. Almighty God, we are taught by your word that all our doings without love are worth nothing. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace of all virtue. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us conclude with the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and thus promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou would grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of your servants as may be most expedient for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and with those you love and pray for now and always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May we continue in our prayers for one another. See you next week. Thank, Thank you, you for, for joining, joining us today. today. We hope you and your family have a wonderful day. Stay safe, be well, God bless.